Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Real Estate Lab podcast, your favorite spot for all things Austin real estate. We're jumping into a very awesome topic right now. Will Austin turn into San Francisco with new zoning laws? We're diving deep into this topic, exploring what it means for our city's future and what Austin's allowing in regards to things like three units per lot in the single family zoning. And we're going to unpack all that. We also have a guest, Katie Shawell, who also is building places to call home with her company. So what do y'all think about San Francisco, Austin, the new zoning, infill development? Where's the city what going? Do what do you think? Oh, I think Ian? I want to hear uh, from, I want to hear in the comments, obviously. I want to hear what other people think. And then I want to be able to address that. But why don't we start off with um, Katie's business and what she's what she's trying to focus on to help help or prevent that from happening. Yeah, so one thing that I think is interesting is the way you said zoning, because what is going on lately in all the new Home Act is actually not changing zoning at all. It's it's changing the land use policy, which just means what you can build on the lot. It did affect some zoning limitations, um, but the zoning changes are actually not the biggest change so far. Um, I am, though, uh, my company, Topos Development or Topos Collective, we're a developer, and we are wanting to add more housing, more density in Austin. So um, I am an investor. I started investing in rentals um, in the greater Austin area. I'm also a realtor, but partnered up with some uh, local builders and building for a long time. And we've got a project going. We're going to be using the new home phase one initiative to be able to build bigger units on the lot. And then we want to do more and do three units on the lot, um, which is the first phase of the change. But I'm, I'm really excited for the changes. I've lived in Austin since 2007 and have seen it change a lot. Uh, and so, so yeah, I'm excited about it. I think it's going to change. Do I think it's going to turn into San Francisco overnight? No, <laughs> not at all. And what was interesting too, is the SF1 and the zoning can we, can status we talk about like what that SF1, SF2 acronyms? didn't can change, but what's changing is on SF1, know. you could add more units. That's what you're saying. Sure. SF. So SF stands for single family in the Austin right. zoning rules. So previously there was SF one, two, and three. There's a lot, but that was the most common single family zoning. And typically you had to have SF three in order to build more than one unit on your lot. And now with the new home phase one that just went into effect uh, February 5th, it's three units by right. So you can build three units by right if your zoning is SF1, 2, or 3. However, it doesn't mean you have to, and it doesn't mean everyone will do it. And you also still have to think about deed restrictions, which are very tricky. Um, love to talk more about that. But yeah, that's SF is just the zoning in Austin. Yeah, it's kind of confusing because we're talking about San Francisco comparisons and SF zoning, which is single family. So when, when we have the title, I'm thinking, are we going to see these row houses developed? Is that something y'all are seeing? Do you know if people are applying? Like, do y'all have developer clients that are starting to knock these out? Or do you see these when you're helping buyers out? Daphne? Sorry, I thought that question was for me. <laughs> okay, so your question was, are we seeing... Can you recap the question again? Like row houses, townhomes, this like urban infill stuff. Do you, do you see that growing rapidly? So without doing research on something like that necessarily, my quick gut reaction would be to say no, simply because we are in Texas and we are in Austin, which is the capital of Texas. And I think as all of you guys would probably agree or not, let me know if not. Uh, people that want to buy a home in Texas, a lot of times want space. They want land. They want like the house to be big, unless of course you're buying something downtown on campus, Mueller, or really, really close to town. But generally I don't see the, the row house setup becoming particularly possible, popular here. 
Yeah, I and I can see that too. It's like, it's going to be interesting because a lot of the developers right now, and I give you context on our project that we have going, before this change, we could have only built, you know, maybe a 2200 square foot house and an 1100 square foot ADU. And now with our first draft of architect plans, we're at 2,400 square foot on one and almost 14, almost 1,500 on another. So that means we've already been able to add square footage just on this one project. Mm -hmm. So depending on your lot size and layout, you with your architect, so, you can design row houses or a duplex and a single family. It just changes so many options on what you can build. I mean, I want to see creative architects. Like I'm not an architect, I'm know, not that creative, but. I really want to see. I know there's a lot of architects out there that have that. I, mean, I just, I, I'll Austin listen. I'll listen, but I'll come. I want, I want to respond after. I haven't seen a whole lot of those though. So if you are an architect, hit me up. I'd love to hear your ideas. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be interesting. And I have seen some prelim drafts of those, but I mean, I haven't seen what's been submitted since February 5th either. So a lot to come. What does, I'm just curious, what does that look like? You said, oh, I'm sorry. quick question but you said you, you're you're wanting to see some creative architects like what does that look like as a reference well so do you do you work on the east side of austin yes. Yes. does this ring a bell you've got two houses on one lot you've got a driveway down the side they may or may not all look kind of the same mm -hmm. they're just you know um, maximizing what can fit on there and they look like two single family houses right mm -hmm. Exactly. And then you also have a condo regime because they're set up that way with a condo instead of having their own parcel, you know, separated out. Well, that's like been the pattern in Austin for so many years because of the ADU rules, right? Mm -hmm. It was like the zoning combined with the land use had limitations that created these same kind of structures. And with this change, it almost simplified it. Um, I was I went to the AIA, um, the American Institute of Architects, um, Austin chapter had a big meetup when this was passing because they had a lot of input with the city on, you know, all the changes and what they recommended. And ultimately, the world is your oyster when it comes to a piece of land. And then you have to follow all the rules that the city makes in Austin. And then your architect and your engineer are really the people who go and pull the strings and the levers and help you make a design that works. And so now with all these changes, it, there's just a lot more options that can be drawn that couldn't be drawn before. So, you know, when I'm- So, you know, what's interesting is you have to think hey, about the people that are Houston. building, I've seen right? This and I'm not talking about Italy. you, Katie, I'm I've talking about <laughs> people that are, let's say on the outside looking in. So today I was on a call with so um, how can we someone who's, who wants to find a nice, large commercial setup, Ramon, but if they find land and want to develop, then that would work too. And they, you know, they might do a two unit. For the five unit, so the or, well, four are unit, more open 20 unit, they, were they might build everything. something larger. They might take something that exists, tear it down and put something new. I, I guess what I'm saying is they're, they're in Miami. They don't know Texas. So to your point, Daphne, they don't know what it's like to be in Texas. They, that person will never live in Texas. That person's looking at it like, am I going to make money? And how much? Is this going to be a write-off? And how much? Right, they're, they, they're, they're numbers driven, not emotions or freedom or whatever, you know, variable. They're not driven by the same things. And so the reason why I said, the reason why I think San Francisco and Austin are a fun comparison is because you have that tech <laughs> draw. And so a lot of people over the last few years would come here and say, I wanna invest. I'm gonna buy my primary and I'm gonna buy one, two, three, four other single family homes. But now they could buy their, you know, if they're still coming back and forth, they can buy their home and maybe buy, put like four houses on that same, or not four on that same lot, but multiple houses on that same lot, or be a little more creative because they saw it where they're used to living. They're like, oh, I really like this. I really like this Spanish style bungalow compound. And you're like, what? Mm -hmm. But they might, they can put it in the middle of the city now. I know, right? Right there. Heard it, heard it here first. Country urban. JJ, you better trademark that. That's really good. I like it. <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, I agree. I think it's, yeah, SF is a lot more dense, but there's going to be country urban. Is that like a, maybe that's like a new type of housing where it's urban, but you'll probably have more yard space, something like that. <laughs> you, I know, you better get on that. <laughs> well, people do think, the, the, the first perception of Boston is it's it's country. And I'm like, it is. That's why you have a yard. That That's as country as it gets for me, for central Austin. <laughs> you know, sure. and I think affordability is another really big one, right? It's like everybody loves Austin and wants to move here, but that's part of the problem in San Francisco too, is that they have a very limited amount of real estate and they've maxed it out. And now you can't really do much else. And combined with tech and all that was why it's so expensive over there in California. But, um, in Austin, I mean, I've been here a long time and I don't want my friends to not be able to move here if they want, or like my children to not be able to buy here in 20 years. So it's like, it is a fine balance of I'm a Texan, die hard all the way. I love my, you know, independence and yard and all that fun stuff. But I also see how much affordability has been impacted by Austin, not having density and not having different options like this. Uh, so I'm excited about what can happen. Um, and also there's a lot of, you know, a lot of the rail systems and a lot of the transportation initiatives and walkability and biking. It's like they're really trying to envision a whole new Austin, which, you know, Austin's changing. It's always been changing for, I don't know how long people have quoted how much it's changing. So. so. Katie, I was curious about your perception here. Cause I thought was, what was cool is you told me you worked with the ADU startup for a while mm -hmm. and then you're talking about how creative things could get like what how creative is it going to get like it i don't know some of it looks a little cookie cutter if it's too unique it's like uber luxury but when you talk about the east side i'm curious if, like is you going to see like land bridges or something <laughs> that's Hobby very, houses that's creative <laughs> yeah <laughs> You know, I think there is going to be a limitation upon the developer's tolerance level for that risk, right? Being the pioneer, being the first one to go make the row home when it's the first mm -hmm. row home in Austin. Um, I, I mean, I, so I'm part of um, Austin Infill Coalition, where a lot of the builders in Austin, you know, get together and talk about, you know, all the different things that are going on. And I have heard a fair amount of people say, like, I don't want to be the first Listen. one who does this because I just don't know if it'll sell. Or another thing that recently changed was the removing the parking minimum, like the requirement. So it's like who in Austin doesn't need a garage? They're like the policies changed, but is the demand in the market going to be there for a product? If you get too creative or you don't have parking or you have a land bridge to your pods or whatever it is. Um, so that's kind of the to be determined on you know, who's going to take the first risk, who's going to have the vision, who's going to actually build it and see who comes. Um, but there is a lot of options for creativity. I think it's just the who's going to be willing to do that. So when are we going to see these? If there, if people are, you said hmm. application started in February? February 5th was the first day you could submit your application. You know, I've heard that I there's was multiple in, that are already in a I was in a... And so I promise this is a segue, a good segue. I was in uh, Terlingua this for yesterday, and they, a couple approval. days ago, so um, like which is a ghost town that sits right in between the two big bins, uh, really state and national parks. Okay. Come to fruition when you talk about creative, it's gonna be, you I, saw I also, a bunch of... Um, like smaller, the, almost uh, um, Austin, tiny uh, home units a, that were in a community setting. And it was so cool. And there were a lot of them that were propping up. And I could see years from now. there is a certain a subset of people. We'll call them OG mm -hmm. Austinites. Like, we'll call them that. There are a certain process. subset of people in Austin, in the Austin area, that sense. would love to have this kind of community vibe that's central that's that has the walkability all the things you're talking about where you know like-minded people can gather in in a space and they don't need a lot of land space or or they have like a shared community garden and maybe uh <laughs> shared showers and stuff like that which is what this ghost town setup was it was so interesting to see that play out well but think about it like we've got some of these little hidden coves and that's uh that's a that's kind of a vibe here, but it's just not as pronounced 
anymore because we've created this density, but now you can go back to having these more creative communities and confined communities within a neighborhood, right? So I, I'm interested to see how in five, 10, 15 years, it'll, mm -hmm. it'll shift. So it could be either, right? So it, imagine as an Airbnb, that could be really solid. It's possible. But you got to think about, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna transfer that a little bit to the people that live yeah. in Big Bend. Okay? So you've got this big, sprawling state park, hundreds of miles across. But then there's like this neighborhood that are for all the workers. And it almost feels like the same thing where it's a bunch of little smaller houses because they don't want to go anywhere. They don't need to go anywhere. Totally. They live there. Everything that they need is there. If they have to drive to, you know, a Walmart, it's four I'm hours away. About that community, they don't want. They don't. They don't have is a use case for leaving. So they are permanent residents, where so many like others are. Motel, uh, you know, um, maybe we we'll call them timeshare, or we'll call them vacationers or Airbnb. -er. So I see both. I really do, and I think it just depends on the personality. And so I guess that would go back to the questions in, for you in the comments. If you're watching this, do you? have any desire for a place like that like i know if i had a camper somewhere on the coast i'd be fine right on the coast of costa rica but on the coast somewhere <laughs> if i had a place where i could go and just chill i'd probably spend a lot of time there until gradually i am always there or mostly there but that's i mean that's many years but i could see that becoming a thing um especially in a place like austin right i truly love it here right we're all here because we, we like the vibe, we like what it, what it was and maybe what it will become. So the next question I would have is, what do you think this is gonna to do to traffic if we start increasing the density in some of these neighborhoods? How do you think that's gonna impact traffic in y'all's neighborhoods? What are you shaking your head for, JJ? <laughs> Terribly. It's terrible. <laughs> I mean, if you just keep adding more people into Central. Oh, I'd love that. It's going to be a hot Imagine mess. if you did have yeah, a little one you know, a bunch of pods and then you had your airwalk bridge that, that goes over to this little elevated office space that's that with, you uh, you know, like sitting so on top and you've got kind of the view of the skyline and then you can come back to your little individual. Listen, I'm talking Mars colony here. It's weird, but I can see it. Right. Coming up, but I think it's important that all factors are included um, so that we can build more dense communities like domains or mule Pull it up, or, you know, there's please. one coming to South and East Austin. It's really? Like, That's great because there's well, and, much, and so, so um, centralized. we got to keep the traffic from everyone having to cross. It's not velocity. Today. Velocity is South. I have a theory on that, that east. the office buildings well, well, are going to turn so into yeah, southeast. those spaces. It'd be cool. If so, I haven't seen any updates to it. What? Did you know, did you guys hear about the uh, um, the Leander Springs project? You remember that? Yeah. Well, it was this beautiful, well, yeah, Leander, Leander Springs. <laughs> like they had come up with different names and stuff. Have you seen the drawings but it was, for the They East were bringing Austin this man-made beach like they did to Green one of those communities. Somewhere in uh houston like where it's so you know it's like it living on in, in hawaii yeah. you know what it's called where you just have this huge little restaurants and maybe some housing along there canceled canceled I, what i was so excited for that project might be that one i that cannot I believe they did that it was canceled springdale please Yeah. Not yes. Not the lagoon. What portion of it? Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So sad. Oh, it was canceled. Huh? Oh. So may I jump in here? So I, I remember when this first came out, I think it was late 2020, or if not, it, it was announced like early 2021, and they were supposed to have an opening party on New Year's going into 22. So, so I think it was supposed to be January 31st, 20, 2021. And it was this huge thing, and they announced it kind of in the middle of the pandemic. So everybody was super excited about it, and obviously the market was absolutely on fire, and that's when everything was going in multiple offers, et cetera. Um, and yeah, that's it, exactly. And I remember having clients saying like, I want to live in Leander because of the Springs. And everyone was excited about it. But I also distinctly remember telling them this is still very much in the planning phase. They haven't done anything. And I feel like in Austin, so many times they talk about projects like this and nothing comes to fruition. So the, those clients, I'm like, just know that this may not happen. Um, ultimately, they didn't buy in Leander. Um, but yeah, when I saw this, that that it wasn't going to come through, I was... I was really bummed for Leander. They need something. Yeah, I, I heard. I wasn't. Man, I just learned about that Go in real time. I'm sad. <laughs> yeah, such well, a bummer. I, was say, I, also... I didn't know if it was Go for it. water I'm I'm or I couldn't remember if it was water or financial. <laughs> Look at I, this, say, uh, I did There's read a... something about why it didn't go through. Yeah. Sounds like all of it. <laughs> they're talking about a billion dollars to raise mm -hmm. um and then i found this one is this the springdale green this is springdale east side uh-oh i'm in a virtual um no here i'll share the one i think it is is this one you're talking about katie it's just a rendering. I saw a better rendering the other day. But yeah, it's pretty interesting that they're there, that they're doing it in Bastrop when it's that's not very far from the existing yeah, international the airport, there. right? Like, what do you think the play is there? Is it only is it ex exclusively for movie stars and uh, uh, boring company employees? Like, is that the plan? Uh, there is a community in Dallas, just outside of Dallas, that has one of these huge like clear water ponds in the middle of the community and that's a really huge they're well, well they're expanding it but it's yeah i was gonna say it's gonna take uh, uh, is a i think it was 2030 when they'll have the next 20 gates or something here. added i mean it's, it's is basically not new. uh i know they've so so we're gonna have more people in it but they, less walkability until we catch up vegas like resort bad irrigation airport like private airport and no airports oh it's fun yeah. Oh, I thought we were. You know, hold on, hold on. That is positive. You know why? Sounds Think like too much of a pitch for me. That creates, but I love it. Right? <laughs> I, I know it might affect affordability for a little while, but that's why these changes are relevant right now. Because yeah, you have this population that's already here awesome and still coming. So how do we increase their their ability right to afford to live here so that we can continue to develop our economy? So I think that's good that we have that pressure because if there's no pressure, you get no diamonds, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about a positive thing. No, no. <laughs> Yeah. People. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but y'all see the, <laughs> the this makes me right. think of how have either of you, JJ or Daphne, I know you I know you have, Katie, but JJ or Daphne, have you ever had a client or yourselves argue over a fence line yeah. and whose responsibility it is to replace a fence? I feel like if you take That's that right. it's true. It's like a necessity it, at this point. So now it's just like if, about trying to keep up. If we can't talk, you know, if we can't get about past the community fence, shared spaces and like then this is going to be um, one heck of a circumstantial. Like, can you build uh, like a, a duplex almost in an L shape with a single family and then have like a community shared space in the middle? Um, but then you know that requires three different households working together to ma either maintain the common shared area or have like-minded intent. 
Um, so it can be tricky when you like. <laughs> It's like sub suburban okay war. Really cool. It's like that, like, let's that say boundary line. The inches and you build over. it. And have you any of y'all been to the lawn? You basically facilitate your have you been to the lawn? Situation in your own uh, south so South Congress, you, uh, further south than just downtown? It's like, yes. It's by the meteor. So the lawn, or almost like, yeah, you should look that up, but almost any kind of food truck park. But the reason why I so brought that up like is because of instead of it being a food truck park, it's a bunch of like, little like shops. Which is kind of like medium term rentals a, a or even just that was converted co-living like jewelry shop. I, I've seen jewelry investors shop. put so together cool. a house and, I bring that and there's like a certain like, theme like, and there might even be an ADU. It, it could be professionals have, it could be like a religious I've group just something you just to just, you're basically picking yeah. create because we that don't have vibe that. We have one and that's prominent one like what do y'all see as quote unquote co-living have y'all seen these things um, then there's uh, what is it mobile loaves and fishes i, I forget the, the community where they're actually right focus on uh mm -hmm. rehousing um people experiencing homelessness right like so the, like those i could see those efforts people in the private sector kind of working on that a little bit more. Those are the developers I can see taking, oh, taking the leap a little bit first, and then it moves into profit. Maybe. Oh, you're saying almost like a tiny mm -hmm. home community of sorts. Mm -hmm. I honestly think, yeah, I honestly think it's going to be, we need all of those things to keep up with the shortage that we like have. Like a nonprofit. And to actually impact yeah. the affordability, it's kind of like we need all of the above. So, yeah, either investors, developers, investors that want to build it themselves. Um, I also find that it's hard to find resources on what's possible. I mean, I have spent months and months going to events and meetups and hearing professionals talk. I mean, I know everyday people don't have time to go to these, all of these different places to find the information. So I think it's hard for the everyday homeowner to really understand what their options are. So. I know that's one thing I'm trying to do is get more information out there on like what really could like dumb it down a little bit of like what's a simplified. If, if there's one thing that I've learned, you, if there's one thing that I've learned, it's it. that just because you can sell them for more doesn't mean that people will sell them. I'm oh, sorry for less doesn't mean that people will sell them for less. Great example would be the uh, the three D printed home community. What do you What do you think is going to trend? Like co living, like some medium term rentals, some um, like tiny homes. What do you think? Or we're looking at with this, even the three units on one lot thing for ADU many of the labor opportunities. Costs. 1400 square foot for this, and I understand that they're pioneering an effort, but they're removing really labor costs. They're removing a lot of the agent agency relationships, and so you're removing brokerage costs Less you're removing cost, right? all so sorts of things and so they're still charging and the developer considerably can still more, more right because you're selling three instead of two but then the buyer can should in my opinion it. but that's just me go ahead daphne sorry you look like you have a question but if they're selling well but everything's selling right right like if it's a band and it's new yeah please 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 mm -hmm. i've tried but no, it hasn't. It, I haven't been able to close a transaction. 
specifically with that community or one of them in one of the smaller communities that are around Austin? I have not completed a transaction though. Yeah. I mean, if they're selling, then they're selling though, right? So I, I was there for the 3D printed home. I was there for the launch party. They had, you know, the, the company invited a couple of us <laughs> for the launch party. So have but then, you guys actually like, there were other times where I was there trying to get footage and they kicked me out. So, you know, uh, but I have one of those on my on the channel where people can look. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I think I go through things that are relevant to people that may be considering that. So I would say just take a look, research it a little bit. There are some factors in there that I think are unknowns still, right? You can put so, whatever you want. Like the biggest thing I'll say is I we're in a place a where our foundation is always moving. Have been interested we're always worried about, about the so malleability of our, go, our cool slabs, thing. Texas. Uh, and, and yet we've made a house which out of a slab. I found intriguing. <laughs> Essentially, and I understand it's a, it's a real, uh, so I get that. And it should have, it should be able to withstand a little bit more, but mother earth, oh, she can be, she can be mean sometimes. I'd say eight out of their 10 boxes. She's and moody and that's okay. And that's okay, like but availability, just, like we need to know that. So I'm curious long-term how that, price range that's going to play out. So Daphne, I have a question for you because I haven't heard this come up yet. Which, which is, which is ideal crazy. for how the growth of Austin goes based on these zoning changes. Oh, sorry. What What is ideal <laughs> for the zoning changes like what would you like to see happen in all <laughs> She's a moody girl. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna drop a small small it, little I'm sorry it cut out political a little bit. nugget Can in there without trying to be political. Yeah. You can't drive a lot of places without a car in a state that is oil dependent. And I like how you were holding it up. Oh, everything's political. To your face. Well, um, but why is it factual, right? Like, the, one of those so that's all I'm going to say. About and that yeah, a that's lot it. of people want yeah. is just the sheer mm. accessibility and walkability. Yeah. I think I work with so many people that relocate from out of state, as I'm sure you guys do. And a lot of times people will look at Austin on the map and think, oh, I work downtown and Round Rock's right here. It should be a quick drive. It should be like a five, 10 minute drive. They don't really realize until they get here how much land mass there is between point A and B. So having these neighborhoods that could potentially offer more walkability and access, or maybe just shorter drives or even public transit, that would be an absolute, I hate saying this because it's such a dumb buzzword, but it would be such an absolute game changer for Austin because right now you can't come and live in Texas without a car. And yeah, 
Uh, yeah. Period. No and, just period. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. That would be part of my fantasy is is having communities that are more walkable where you don't have yeah. to drive 25 minutes I mean, to go to the park. Yeah. But a lot isn't it? Isn't a large part of that also based on cement holdings, not just like liquid cash? Uh, that's, I don't even know if that's as much political. That is just factual. <laughs> okay, sure. Economical. How about economical? Make everything political, guys. The economics shows that we got fuel to burn. But I, I agree with Daphne. I lived in a high rise in Austin, in downtown Austin for 12 years from like 08 and 12 years from there. And it was the dream. Like I live in Pflugerville now and people are like, how's Pflugerville? And I'm like, the kids love it. Meaning I don't like, I miss my walkability. I don't like driving as much as I liked walking. So I'm, I'm really into, even if it's smaller, you know, like little tiny homes or little two bed, two baths, I think it's going to get eaten up. I just don't know the pricing. When I talk to developers, Katie, I'm, I'm figuring out yeah. how people are doing this. They're like, I don't want to build the small unit because I got to figure out my square dollar per square foot for the build and figure out my return. But I don't want to be that first, and growing is what I you hear. know, like small home seller. But I, I think the young professionals got money. Last I heard, there's like 35,000 millionaires here. So I think they'll... Yeah. yeah, they'll they'll like the little two bed two bath maybe, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I don't know who these people are. I don't know yeah, if they're all in West Lake. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna share this. I think it's probably um, net worth. Austin Board of Realtors. Yeah. Um, they're econ uh, economists. It's hard to count someone's cash, but I think net worth is countable. Maybe. What's in phase I don't even know how they get these stats, the, honestly. But to decrease yeah. the minimum lot size. So phase one was just making three units an option. Phase two is to reduce the size of the lot. And um, Austin has the highest minimum lot size. Of I want to see this chart size. compared to San Francisco. And it also, I'll, I can show this chart in a minute, but it also has the highest cost. Like, like medium at some point price. in the future. So there's definitely a correlation with lot size and home price, but this is showing their projected potential, right? This is all a projection of the decline in square footage of the home based on the decline in lot size and the price. So they're, so think about it right now today, you either have an ADU, which is just a 2-2, and I, I personally wouldn't want a 2-2, I want a 3-2. Um, so you can either get the ADU or you can go get the bigger house, which is gonna be a million plus in a central area. So now let's say you have three 1200 square foot houses that maybe are 750, but you know, 1400 square feet or 1200 square feet is better for me than 1100 square feet, which is what the ADU rules were before. So it's gonna give us more of this like middle size and hopefully more of the middle size than what we had before. Before we had small and as big as you could go based on what could fit. And hopefully now yeah, we'll end up it, with that's a that's a huge sizes, which uh, home size be maybe like more square footage for the home younger for that price. people want okay. as well as more affordable than that million one and up um unit that was available before so so yeah the lot size i think will be an important impact but uh the it's all yeah it's all going to be about whether or not this goes through and then what gets built after. It's not gonna be a quick overnight process. <laughs> yeah, let me find. Yeah, I wonder, I don't know what San Francisco's minimum lot size is, but it's gotta be yeah, it's interesting compared to, think... to Austin. Austin is 75, or sorry, 5750 right now, which is yeah, think, quite yeah. large um, and very outdated for it being the growing, you know, dense urban community that it's it's becoming. I 
quick, quick note on that. I don't know what the minimum limit is in San Francisco, but we were there last September. And as I go through neighborhoods, we travel a lot. And as I go through neighborhoods, I always pull up right. realtor.com to see what's around us immediately. And I pulled this one house that we thought was a deal. I'm using air quotes. And the house was like 2,800 square feet. And I showed my boyfriend, I think it was like a million two and it needed everything. It was falling apart. Mm -hmm. So I showed it to my boyfriend. I was like, well, oh, look at this. This is a deal for the area. I I, goes, I think oh, wow, the cooling off it's comes from abrupt feet. decision said, no, to the leave. Size. The house is come here, <laughs> and then they didn't understand so, all of the things that come along much, with much being a, a that's Texas that's native, native yeah. or a Texas yeah. citizen, yeah. including what you would consider lots. simple things like the weather or the walkability, and that's just gone. Right? The whole issue right? is so you're demand, used to this, and, and you're used to you know a temporary turn. All of that stuff. Some people want to go back to that, and I so I see that. Plus, ten years from jobs, now, return to work was you, enforced in a lot of places. Price of homes in Austin so that, that was out of their control. Uh, families, people move away. They're like, oh, I want land. Price. and I want to like, be, I, don't think I want privacy. And then they're and out there that they and they're like, man, I'm lonely. I've seriously had people, not even in a year, come buy land, like a rant, and then say, I can't do this. I got to go back. This is my husband's idea. We tried it. I'm out. And so they both go back to more urban living. So those are the, all the things that had to come into play because of how rapid it happened during the pandemic. And now it's kind of coming back down at all and the interest rates. So all are putting us in this, this weird uh, spot. But I think y'all see prices? No pandemic, we would still be in a situation we're, where we're, I'm curious where y'all see prices in these not spaces where there could like, be more know, new construction. You might be flat this right? Year. We're expecting more new construction because of this, I think. Like, do you think it's coming back? Yeah. You think it's flat? You think it's still dipping this year? The thing they don't tell you, the thing they don't tell you, from what I remember, I didn't watch the video, I did read, like skim through it. And they don't tell you that many of Travis County just to go to Williamson so County or to Hayes County. Those two things together That's that kind of outlier, like right? So like they're just moving down the street 10 minutes. <laughs> Sounds redundant. But yeah, it's not, we're not in a normal, like there's not really anything about the market. Yeah. Right now and I also think Austin always a catch. got way Numbers too hot. Are... We're still kind of cooling off, would y'all say? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Absolutely. Well, and then add that, add to that your property tax situation this year, where it's just wildly all of, it's wild, the, the um, variable taxes for people. Please, I'm excited to hear this. Yes. Yeah, what do you believe that? You think it's Yeah. Have you seen this article? Mm -hmm. More people leaving. Yes. First time in 20 years, more people leaving than coming uh, to Travis County for the first time I in 20 years. I figured there had to be a catch. <laughs> I did see this article. And I think 
if I had to say why, I think that has to be affordability. I mean, if you, well, you can't afford, you know, what's interesting. Here, I don't know why you wouldn't want to be here. Unless it's what's interesting about that particular choice, point you made, Daphne, um, I mean, it kind of falls I've in line with what we've all been talking about about the migration so path. So people, so but that also shows that people are leaving. A primary, but then they buy uh, residence. central. Like I imagine people leaving central to the suburbs. Yeah. Right. So your property taxes Urban are going to suburban. do what they're going to do. Right. And you can't argue yeah. it when everybody in the neighborhoods increased by forty percent. Right. People are selling them yeah. because they see this opportunity. And so everybody around you selling their yeah, houses for 100, 200, 300 thousand more. Um, are they you can't go back to the, the county and say, well, my property um, appraisal is too high. No, it's not too high. They're all selling it for that much more. And these are these are your investment properties that people are renting, else, right? So you can't argue that. Price. So it's a really, yeah, it's it's that's yes. part of the challenge. You have people that come here and build, or not build, sorry, buy up the things because that's what you're taught to do. But it really, it really screws up the local economy if they're not staying or they're not living yes. in it. Yeah. yeah. And so this density should help with that. So if somebody buys a primary. And then they only do that in their own property. They would get the they would get hit with their own property tax increase for their investment properties. And that's going to be something because they'll Absolutely. say, "Whoa, whoa, 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 hold May on, I jump in." <laughs> We're not going to sell that. We're going to hold on to it. Well, yeah, I have some yeah, clients be interesting. that are here from California. Oh, I'm curious to see that. And property taxes are like sub one percent. Sub means under, right? Below. Sub one percent. <laughs> Uh, anyway, they're under 1% a lot of times or around the 1% mark. So even if you have a $900,000 townhome, your property taxes are only nine grand a year, give or take, in California. And then you come here and you buy that same $900,000 home, just like a single family home, property taxes are easily going to be closer to $15,000, if not more. So I have clients that come here, particularly from California or even like Arizona or just other parts of the country in general. And the cost of living here is lower, but then they're always, they feel like they're always kind of getting got by those property taxes, especially in the last couple of years. And especially those clients that came right at the start of the pandemic, where you could still get a big, beautiful, brand new construction home in, let's say like Dripping Springs for $600,000 on a third of an acre and then today that house is worth well over a million. If they didn't file their homestead exemption, of course, the property taxes are probably double. Where was I going? The cost, I like they're all kind of like <laughs> feeling it out. Yeah. Yeah. Let me make sure I heard this correctly. So, so, so let me make sure I heard this correctly, Katie. So if Daphne, JJ, and I wanted to go in on a project together and it was to build this cool community for whatever purpose we all strategically align with, you would be willing to help us develop that and we would put that all together and then turn that over for long-term gains. And we would all win, our clients would win, or tenants or however. That'd be really cool. All right, yeah. Daphne, JJ, we're in. Let's, I let's mean, go. <laughs> development by definition is speculative. Yeah, speaking right? of the market, so, Katie, are you seeing yeah. a, is, uh, a lot of panels, development like, opportunities, uh, like sellers panels, that are willing right? to we're sell? And then, and then we have water developers that are figuring out if the new beautiful square footage product is going to work. Community garden, right? Do you think it's a good economy for that? Really, really cool. Uh, an underground tunnel, opportunities, right? It's like underground tunnel system. Equity, yeah, yeah, yeah. One really cool house, but that's for its value. It's like flipping, right? You just buy low. 
force some appreciation, sell, sell higher, but development about, is like, how, how great, well, here's the thing, when you like have these hail like, storms and all that, down that, that's, has a great value, right? people, you would people from tear something down that San Francisco, they don't the understand, they might whatever. be familiar with you a couple of so much more earthquakes here and there, right, maybe some rock slides or something, but no, 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 the hail in the middle of the summer, oh, that is the worst, it gets your roof, it gets your car, your, if you have solar panels, it might fall in the pool. Um, all the yeah, things. Yeah, so you have to might run the numbers and see if the margins make sense. But I think build a rent is oh, a yeah, that's what I'm saying. for people. If they're willing I almost to broke my hand blocking a and giant so very ball process. of hail. Um, but that we, ended like, up destroying my car as I was running like to it to try to, to invest I was at a friend's house to try to take the car and drive somewhere so, else. Like, I, um, I know, I'm so angry. And in the like car, it's between, all glass on the top. You've gone, decided and even though it's reinforced glass, it only had one scratch. The rest of the car was like, tick, 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 all over. I'm like, come on. And I parked under a tree in some rando's driveway. And I'm like, listen, if you're going to yell at me, what are you going to do? Actually, this is Texas, so they could be carrying or something, which is also scary. But <laughs> anyways, all the things. What sort of? Uh, I think it was Feb February, maybe fall. Right? Yeah, yeah, it was fairly recent. Not good. Are you syndicating? Are you... Oh, yeah. I was in Houston when that happened. Yeah, I heard about it. That's what I'm saying. It's just randomly all over yeah, the place. Yeah, absolutely. Do it. Here's the thing. I'm fine with more hail as long as it A, doesn't damage anything, He's and B, you fills our lane. scale. I like that. That's another thing that people... <laughs> <laughs> So, so back at, back at, uh, flipping, um, where was I? Yeah. Big I like your Big hybrid bridge idea into There's the no office that we repurpose. <laughs> None. Lake Travis dry as a bone. I'm telling you, if, if oh, somebody's watching this and they're like, do Elon I invest in out, Austin? It out of it. <laughs> if you're in the position yeah. <laughs> to purchase something and you like the idea of having a lake lot, Right now, the lake is so dry that most marinas won't be able to handle it. We'll Sounds like a $4 million dollar house. Public <laughs> launches won't be available. So if you want to get a waterfront property right now, reach out to any of us. We would love to be able to help you out because while it seems like <laughs> uh, kind of a disaster <laughs> from, <laughs> just like, from oh, afar, no. this is where I see a lot of people end up turning around and making a, a pretty significant profit. Uh, or, or getting the affordable lakes, mm -hmm. lakeside home that they've always wanted. Anyway, that's a tangent. Tangential. Wait. You wanna, you wanna have uh, Katie help develop a pop-up food truck park on the island in the middle of the lake? <laughs> yeah. Oh my it's you. God. You're out at the wrong time. I know, but that's the thing. That's the demand. You only have like six months to hurry up and like capitalize on it, so people will pay thousands of do it. thousands of dollars for a taco, an experience on the island, sometimes island. It's so terrible. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, Katie. Yeah, there was a one, there was a hailstorm in South Austin about two weeks ago. I got caught in. Yeah. It wasn't that big, though. Yeah. What, which uh, hailstorm was that? So where, which hailstorm, which was that? She's, this fall? She led with 04, man. She didn't leave with it. She was second, but still. Oh, just now. Okay. <laughs> I'm in it. Okay. All right, we're just just because of time. I want to. I'm going to do our time, and so can we can we go around the room? Yeah. Katie being last, uh, or or JJ being last, and kind of talk about. I think we're what, gonna. Uh, what you're feeling about this episode? I think we're gonna get more hell. Isn't that or the San like Francisco thing? Austin thing? Zoning? Just any any comments commentary that you want to share with our viewers as we de start to depart? Yeah. I don't know if it works like that. <laughs> Ice balls. Oh, that'd be so cute. 
So we'll get a whole bunch of tours. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. You know, I'm going to, now I'm going to shift my thought and piggyback off of yours. I had um, a couple clients, one in particular that was set on getting a tiny home. And I said, please don't do that. Get something that's going to appreciate because it didn't have that same, uh, that same velocity of equity build, right? It, or it, or any equity build. But now I don't know if the conversation would be different if somebody came to me today and said, Hey, I want to, I want to, I have this land, or I know this person that has this land. I want to buy a place, put it on their lot and we'll work something out. And now I have a whole house that costs me less. Maybe they'll help fund prod something at, you know, joint venture or something. I could I actually see you. that drove, being a possibility where it wasn't like three years ago when he purchased his home. In the middle of the lake. So now it's, like it kind of opens up our, our creative out of opportunity. Them and high so grass. that's, that's where I'm at. I like, I like the sound of it. Um, in theory, I really want to see how it plays out. And it's different from San Francisco in that we have land to play with. Yes. Yes. It's a risky place to get some food, but it might no, be fun. No, not yet. We're pretty central in Austin right now. Four, five, seven, eight, seven, four, five. Um, and aiming for seven, eight, seven, yeah. oh, two, oh, four, oh, two, one. Absolutely. So we're focused on those kind of growth bands <laughs> right now in central Austin. <laughs> Sometimes island. It's like a pop-up island, like, um, Halloween, like spirit of the drought island. No, I, yeah, do you do any yeah, uh, development around the lake, Katie? Years. Central. O two, o four, two one four five. Did you skip out o four? O four. Okay. I'm bad with juggling numbers in my head. Central. Sure. I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. Uh, I've heard so many different ideas of what home buyers want. And I've had several clients reach out to me every year. I have at least two or three people that are like, I want a tiny home. And then once I realize what's involved, they never follow through and there's not a lot of options. So it'll be interesting to see how that idea plays out. If at all, oh, those are my thoughts. Yeah. Right. I'm going to piggyback off of you. This is like a mastermind at this point. I like that idea because some of the younger professionals or people that had to figure out how to afford real estate were house hacking. But now you might be able to well, get in on a project. Kind of, we're talking about like crowdfunding, about you know, like I'll get a, this little house, you get this Boston. piece, I mean, I'm and they get to have to their own, Boston you know, pieces of real estate still on one lot. So I think it's it's like development problem. hacking or ADU you know, hacking like you said, the, of sorts. It's still house hacking. So it's like an updated 
version for what's happening so nowadays. That's what I'm doing. I'm really excited about it. I, Anything else, Katie, you want to close out with? All this information is hard to understand and come by. So I want to offer realtors too. It's like, I know you have your client relationships. I totally respect that. Uh, if you need help, like doing due diligence on whether a property makes sense or finding where to find information, um, I'm happy to help. Definitely reach out. Um, that's, you know, what we're doing in the development realm. And um, so happy to help there. But ultimately, yeah, I'm excited for what's to come. It's going to be slow. But like my goal is I'd love to build myself out of a job one day to where houses are affordable and we don't need as much density. So that's my plan. I'll be here. Let me know if anybody's interested in um, building something for themselves or investing in a project or any of that. Come find me. Thanks, this was fun. Awesome. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Until next time. And thanks, Katie, for coming and sharing your experience and 